Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. Welcome to Fun University. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn of Mary Gunn Fun, founder and head professor of Fun University. Welcome to Fundamentals Watercolors. What I'm going to try to do here is you are coming to this class going, you know, I've never watercolored. What do I do? What do I need? Where do I start? That's what we're going to address right here tonight. It's going to be very simple, very basic. This is what I do. I ho Hopefully, it will be helpful to you too. Um, the students that are in the class, if you have a question, just put at Mary and we will get you taken care of. Okay, there's a couple, there's some real, real basic things you do when you're watercoloring. Watercolor paper is a real big deal. It's, um, it's made for, um, to for you to do watercolors on. it's it, Sometimes it has a lot of texture, sometimes it doesn't. There's two basic types. One is called hot press and one is called cold press. This one is cold press. I think generally I use cold press. It tends to have a little more texture than a hot press uh, paper, but it isn't any it still is watercolor paper. Hot, what, so hot press tends to be smooth. Cold press seems to have the, I like that texture though. I think it's cool. Um, some back or front, it doesn't really matter. This one has two different, this one's smoother on one side than the other. So um, it's just that. There's some arches, arches I think is, is supposed to be some of the best, but you're fine with Strathmore or Canson, either one are fine. I keep all my scraps right inside here so that I don't have to worry about. And you know, I like to use little things like this for just doing little swatches and, and testing and things like that. So um, just keep the, then I just store them in my, in my case this way up so that it does, they don't fall out. See, there's a whole bunch of little things I could have played with. It, Things I haven't really liked, but I was trying to do a forsythia, for instance. Well, I didn't like it, but it, I can learn from it. So it's all right there. So that is paper. Yeah, watercolor paper is pretty good. Paints. Watercolor paints um, activate with, guess what, water. And so this is a much used palette. They could, you can buy it in pans like this where they're all can they're already decided for you. You can get pans separately, I believe, and you can also get tubes of watercolor paints. You know, if you just have a real basic set of watercolor paints, you'll get that's a great place to start. I remember the ones I think they were prang in the little black things that um, cases that we used to get at school. And they are, they're just fine for starting. It's not a big deal. But um, you usually will want some kind of palette because if you, with watercolors, you can decide how much value or intensity you want the paint to be. So if you have little palettes like this, you can uh, add a little water and add a little pigment. And so you'll get something a little lighter. If you go straight from the pan, it's going to be a lot darker and more more intense. Um, this little, you notice, I just learned this a while back, but um, these all have numbers on them and they, I went ahead and did a swatch of all those colors on, on watercolor paper and then just put the numbers on them, which it looks like they're, they're pretty bad right now, but they, um, they just tell me what these look like when they're on paper. Full strength. You can also swatch so that you have a little delusion and you can see how light they can go and then full strength. But you can get really carried away with those kind of things and I haven't done it. One thing I remember being really surprised about was this really rich, pretty ruby. I had no idea that this was going to be so pretty. So um, that's, those are a couple things that you might want to do. Another thing with color is to have a good handy color wheel so that you can start matching these colors that are on, that you have swatched with a color wheel so that you know how to combine the colors and who might be the complements and triads and all those kind of things. Um, then you can start with like, if you want to have this little red orange and you wanted 
you can add yellows and it's just something to play around this if you have never watercolored starting to play is the best place <laughs> it's just the best place and hopefully this will help you so water wheel a nice set of paints do a little swatching some paper those are where we are so far um brushes gotta have some brushes I just pulled out some real basics and you know this actually is a could be used on some watercolors uh, I, I haven't done it but I want to play with this this old funny uh, I think you could do some pretty cool things with it so stay tuned you will notice that you've got some flat brushes over here this is a fan brush as just well named isn't it and then these have little points so they all have different purposes um, this was actually from my from my oil painting days but it's for large backgrounds this is a smaller little flat brush and uh, you really do determine uh, what the purpose is based on the shape of the brush um, this would be good if you're doing ombres, going down and doing uh, change, letting a color get lighter and lighter. This would be great for that. Um, just abstracty type areas would be great for something like that. This is uh, these would be better for more detail, or if you're getting into some smaller spaces that you want to get into. We're going to get into that one in just a second. This about um, detail this is not, this has been pretty used so it's it's kind of getting it doesn't have much of a point on it anymore and sometimes it is time to say goodbye to an old brush but this is a real nice little detail brush the reason i have a a piece a balsa thing what is it, a dowel is because when i paint i like to have my hand up off the painting um so that i don't end up getting my hand in it and ruining maybe a shirt and ruining perhaps the painting so I hold it with I'm right-handed so I hold it with my left hand and I rep my arm is on the table down here where there's nothing going on and then I just can paint like this if you want more control with your paintbrush get closer to the edge and if you want looser control just get down toward the the other end but if you do, or if you are working on a painting and you you know that it's a wet spot, this is a great thing to prevent yourself from making a mess. Fan brushes have their own unique look. Um, you've seen them probably being used in trees in the background, some tree leaves and things like that. Um, it's something to play with. Okay, so those are brushes. Oh, and then as far as keeping these clean, don't store them when they're dirty make sure you wash them out really nice here's that bob um, and then after they're dry just store them in a up and away so that you don't push the br bristles down another place and i'm going to get to this right now when you're getting your water supply in this is just a bin from the dollar store i keep it in here with a little piece of terry cloth in case i spill a lot of people are they're braver than I am and maybe a little more talented than I, but they will have their water, their water containers up on their surface. But I have found having it in something like this that will catch so I don't knock them over and so the cat doesn't knock them over um, and so that I don't have to worry about having, I've got tech, I've got, you know, often have a, a mouse here and other technical things going on. I don't want anything getting um, wet. So anyway, I always have two. One is for the first dirty release or discharge of the paint. Then you can pull that out. And then this one I, is for the clean. So this one, actually, the second, br second dipping will actually get your, make sure that your brush doesn't have a bunch of other paint on it so that you don't contaminate your pretty pa painting because that's awful when you do that. And all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, now it's mud. So if you if they're drying, you can always set them on something like this too, where they're drying and and so that they don't they're not wet and they're not being compressed in some kind of awful configuration. This is another great tool. Um, they and they have these little water brushes with different 
tips on them too. Um, you just squirt the things. You keep the water in the barrel, squirt them. I can't use them for many uses around around the studio because if I feel like I I want to do paint with some ink or something, I just have it and I can I can just pick it up and do it. I, it's the best. I love these. So that's the water and the brushes that I wanted to tell you about. A couple other things that you really need to have when you're watercoloring. Some paper towels. <laughs> this is, in case you do have a, a spill, you're going to be prepared. This is also, though, when you want to pick up some color. Um, say you have a little section that's too wet, you can just dab it, and you may want to use it for texturing, too. And you can just have that handy. Uh, you never know when you're going to need something. So it's cleanup. That's right. Clean up. So always have some paper towels around or a nice big fluffy towel. Um, tape is a good, good thing to have when you're doing watercoloring. This is regular masking tape, less than $3. This was purple tape. It's supposed to be low tack tape. I don't know that this is... It's not scientific. I, I don't think I'll ever buy purple tape again. I think it was just a marketing thing for um, crafters. But it might be better. I just don't. I just don't know. Um, anyway, so I just got regular masking tape. If you think it is a little, if you think it has too much stick or too much tack, all you have to do is stick it on your arm a little bit, and it will lose some of its stickiness, or on your jeans, or on your yoga pants. Any of those things will work, and it will lose some of its stickiness. You'll get used to what works. Um, you know, it's going to be an experiment for a while, but you'll get used to what works. A hard board is an excellent thing. Washi tape. I like to keep my washi tape, but it would work, but I like to keep my washi tape in case I want to use it. <laughs> so, for decoration, but it, it does work, Sherry. Thank you. So, okay, so um, a hard board is a good thing to have. Um, you'll see a lot of people taping their water, their watercolor paper down to a hard board. It's because these are going to get wet, and when this gets wet, it's going to soak into the fibers, and it's going to expand, and it's going to curl. It's still going to curl, but it sometimes helps. It, it just helps a little bit, I guess, um, to prevent it from some of the curling. So generally what you do, I just use this top piece for my, to hold it down. This is a clipboard from Dollar General. And um, I kept the paper on the, I kept the sticky or the clear stuff on it because I thought, well, that will absolutely protect it from getting wet. So um, you just line this up you try, and you can see through this masking tape, which I think is a plus. And then you just lay it down there and so that it's going to give you some nice little edges. Um, and it's going to help keep it from getting too, too curly. Now I'm just going to do it down here. Generally, you would have this cut to size a little better. But I'm not doing it right now. Um, this was in my, my stash. That's a fun thing. That was using washi tape to just do an ombre thing and texturing it anyway if you don't have one of these and you have want something smaller this is an old thing from close to my heart an old versa map it had warped on me and so i couldn't get that sucker straight so i just cut it into fourths and this i think would be great for smaller pieces especially if you were um, out and about and um, wanted to do a little water coloring um, on the porch or something you didn't want to have all this seriousness stuff but this is, I just cut it into fourths, and I think it would work. <laughs> so, a couple things that, oh, and watercolor pencils. Let me get that, too. I forgot to get the watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils, I just got one drawer. I have a couple drawers of them. Um, watercolor pencils are fabulous in that they are intense watercolor in a pencil. Um... So they have a lot of the same properties as a watercolor. They're activated by water. Um, the thing I really think are, is really fun about these is that you can do a, you can sketch with them and then go and use them as part of the designing. Um, and it will just 
dissolve. And so if you wanted to do a square, for instance, and you didn't want to, if you use graphite in a square, you will see the graphite underneath the paint. Now, if you, if you can do this, you can take a kneaded eraser and soften that graphite line, but it's still going to be there. Okay, and it's still going to be able to be seen under the paint. Um, when you do a little, there's two different ways to basically paint with watercolor. One is, let me get some paint, uh, water, some water. One is to paint on a wet paper. And that's how you get the loosey, blendy, um, splotchy kind of look. See, that's already given up some color into there. Or you can paint on a dry, on a dry piece of paper. It's always best to go ahead and go soften your paint just a little bit, just to warm it up, and so that it will be ready uh, to give to give you some color. So this would be a dry brush, a dry painting on this one, or dry paper. So that's going to give you an ability to do more detail work. But then, if you come over here, which is wet, you're going to have all the little blotches that bleed and look so pretty, make you think of watercoloring. And you can pull out the color from that watercolor line and soften it with some water. Watercolor is able, you can reactivate it to a point um, even after it's dried, but not as um, successfully as if you do it while it's still wet. See how that just kind of, it spreads out? Use both, both my waters there. And then using the color wheel, when you are blending these um, initially, when you're teaching yourself how to do this, this would be uh, this would be in the red violet, the red violet um, family right here, a little pinkish, a little more pink than that. So if you wanted to do, if you wanted to practice blending, then you could go into a violet. And you won't get a muddy color. If you go with you've done the red violet and you add a green right next to it, you're gonna get a muddy color. So if that's what you want, that's how you get it. But you can add a, an analogous color or the color right next to it. And you can get some really, really pretty blends. And you tend to it's best with watercoloring to go from light to dark is what I just did, kind of an accident because I forgot what I was doing, but I'm glad <laughs> it's true, it's the way I wanted it. And then you can add some back up in here. And it's just fun to play with. So what can you do with something like that? Well, if you had something like this that was larger, you could use it as a as a card background, or um, you could use it, uh, if you have a large piece, you can do it as a background for a layout, or a tag, or die cuts. These are really fun, once they're dry, to die cut into shapes. Oh my gosh, they look so good. So this guy is still over here being pretty dry. So now, since he's a dry kind of a dude, we can go ahead and add more color without having it bleed a as much as this one did. Cool, huh? These are very, very basics. And this is what, if you came up to me and said, hey Mary, I've never done a watercoloring. Where do I start? 
These are the things that I would tell you. Okay. Um, this one, the paint is going to move and it's it may not give you exact, you may lose a little control in this one. This one, you're going to have more detail. So this is going to be really good for those blotchy kind of things and these are going to be for um, more, almost like pencil drawings, but not quite. You can combine the two, but not when you're, I wouldn't suggest it right off the bat, but you can combine the two and not have any trouble later. Um, while, while you're trying, you know, just give yourself some shapes and um, start doing some blending like that. You can give yourself a little more room if you want. Um, you can do a sheet like this and then write what you did while you're learning. Pretty soon you'll be able to go, oh, well, that was on wet paper, wet on wet. No problem. This was um, paint on dry. Um, no problem. Analogous colors. You'll start to know these things and they'll make more sense. But when you're um, first, first learning, uh, you can make little notes about what you did. And then that can be, you can keep it in a book and uh, you will be, then later you'll go, oh my gosh, that's second nature to me. So that is my fundamental on how, do, what do I do if I want a watercolor? Oh, one more thing. When you're pulling this off and everything's dry, don't pull it off until it's dry. Pull it off away. Don't pull it straight down. Pull it off and away. Keep your fingers tor close to the the tape and go slow. Um, there's no, don't do it when you're in a hurry, <laughs> okay? Oh, Steven says, can you quicken the drying with heat? You can. Um, you can. You can use a heating tool. Um, I don't, I've never heard anything bad about that. But um, at the same time, watercoloring is one of those things that's kind of a fun thing to take time with. Work in layers. Um, come back to and work some more. Um, one of the things that you might have trouble if you overwork something at, at the at one time, you'll you can get some pilling, not as much with watercolor paper, but it can still pill, which is when it gets all bumpy. Oh, okay, all right, no problem. And um, so anyway, that was a good question. But you can absolutely use your heat tool or a hair dryer to dry it. But again, you want to work in layers and uh, let things dry. It doesn't take too long to dry. You're good. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording and get back to just seeing what's going on with the students. And please let us know if you have any questions. And I hope this is helpful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.